Thank you for volunteering as a DBS verifier for your parish, benefice or mission community. This training video hopes to explain the process for DBS checking in the Diocese of Exeter. Whether you are a new verifier or a serving verifier, hopefully through this video you will better understand your role and responsibilities, and the actions required from you to enable DBS checking to be handled effectively in your local churches. The Diocese of Exeter are firmly committed to the safeguarding of children and adults experiencing or at risk of abuse or neglect. It is important that you understand that your service is a vital part of fulfilling our commitment. Thank you again for offering to serve as a DBS verifier for your parish or mission community. As a verifier, you play a vital role in the safeguarding of vulnerable people in your churches. The Diocese of Exeter is committed to the principles of safer recruitment, as laid down by the Church of England and as guided by experts in the field of safeguarding. We need your assistance locally to fulfil our safer recruitment responsibilities. Safer recruitment is our first and our key opportunity to deter and prevent unsuitable people from gaining contact through work or volunteering with vulnerable groups. It is our opportunity to guard the gateway to those we should protect. Through a series of actions performed within the church and its leadership team, steps are put in place that each applicant for a role, voluntary or paid, must complete before they can be appointed to a role within the church. If you would like to know more about safer recruitment and all of the steps involved, you can find more information, including the flowchart shown here and the National Practice Guidance, in the Safeguarding section of the Diocese of Exeter website. DBS stands for Disclosure and Barring Service. DBS checks, previously known as CRB checks, are undertaken to see if an applicant has a criminal record, if they are on any lists that bar them from working with vulnerable groups, or if they are otherwise known to behave in a manner that is not compatible with them volunteering or working with children or adults at risk. While these sound like quite robust checks to prevent unsuitable people taking on a role, they are not sufficient on their own to provide the level of protection required. An offender may not yet be known to the authorities or convicted of an offence, or people may not have reported their concerns about the behaviour of an individual. Therefore, it is vital that we understand that DBS checks are just one element of safer recruitment, and that all the steps must be completed. DBS checks feature in the preparatory stages of the recruitment process. When the role and its responsibilities are being decided, as it is here that the eligibility of a role for a DBS check is considered. The actual undertaking of a DBS check takes place towards the end of the recruitment process. Once a candidate has been identified as the prospective person to appoint, then they should only be offered the role on condition that all remaining checks are completed successfully and without any concerns being raised through the checks and through their probationary period. It is at this point that they are asked to complete an application for a DBS check. There are two key functions performed by a DBS verifier in the Diocese of Exeter. The first is the initiation of the DBS check with the applicant, informing them of how to apply online and offering assistance with this as necessary. The second is acting as the DBS evidence checker. This requires you to review the applicant's submitted details against their ID documents, looking for any errors or omissions on their application, and confirming that the person in front of you is the person identified in the evidence. Before you can act as a DBS verifier for your parish or mission community, you will need to register. You can download the Diocese of Exeter DBS Verifier Registration Form from the Diocese website under Safeguarding Resources, or request one by emailing dbs at exeter.anglican.org. You will need to complete the form and have it countersigned by your parish priest or a church warden if you are currently without a parish priest 
then return it to the diocesan DBS coordinator whose address is on the form. The form will then be processed by the diocese, by CCPAS and by the DBS. CCPAS are the umbrella body who provide the online DBS application service for our diocese. They are a charity that specialise in safeguarding provision for churches and faith organisations. The term e-bulk is one that you may see or hear around DBS checks. e-bulk is the online system that allows organisations like CCPAS to submit large numbers of DBS checks quickly, securely and reliably to the Disclosure and Barring Service. Moving to an online e-bulk system for DBS checks has allowed the Diocese of Exeter to speed up the average turnaround time for DBS checks and dramatically reduce the number of errors made in applications and the subsequent delays from these. Upon completion of your registration, CCPAS will send you a series of emails confirming your acceptance as a DBS evidence checker. If you haven't received these details within around a week of sending in your registration form, it is a good idea to check that the emails aren't in your spam or junk folders. The emails from CCPAS will take you through first access to their DBS checking website and help you to set up your own password. One of the emails will provide you with the organisation reference number and organisation password for your parish or mission community. Keep these details safe as you will need to provide these codes to all of your applicants. An email from CCPAS confirming your acceptance as an evidence checker will have two guides attached. One is the eBulk guide for Diocese of Exeter DBS evidence checkers that explains how you log in and verify DBS checks for your applicants. The second is the eBulk guide for applicants. Save these guides somewhere safe, particularly the applicant's guide, as you will send this guide to each applicant to help them make their online DBS application. Once you have received these emails, the Diocesan DBS Coordinator will also send you a flowchart that helps to explain the process for DBS verifiers in the Diocese of Exeter in a simpler way, as well as electronic, editable versions of the forms that are used most commonly during the process. The website where the applicant makes their application and where you log in to verify their ID has a very specific web address and is not typically the website found if you do a search for the CCPAS website. The most reliable way to access the website is to click on the link that is found in each of the guides. Should you attempt to type the address into your browser manually, there is a common mistake made in that form of entry. As it is a secure, encrypted website, the start of the address has the characters HTTPS before the colon. People often miss out the S, so if you are having difficulty loading the website, please check the address is entered correctly. If you have any difficulty with your login or password, or experience any other access issues, please contact CCPAS rather than the Diocese of Exeter, as they have a trained technical support team available to help you with this, and only they can reset your personal passwords. They can be contacted on their helpline 0845 120 4550. Whenever you call CCPAS, you should let them know you are calling from the Diocese of Exeter. The online application for the DBS check is just one part of the process for verifiers to complete. We will run through the process in this training and it can be found in a simple to follow flowchart that you can download from the Diocese of Exeter website in the Safeguarding Resources section. The first point in the process is determining the eligibility of the applicant's role for a DBS check. Checks can only legally be obtained for people engaging in activity with children or adults at risk of abuse or neglect 
that falls within a set of eligibility criteria. Under the safer recruitment process, the eligibility of a role for a DBS check should have been considered by the safeguarding rep and PCC when they were putting together the role description and advertising the position. But it is best practice for the DBS verifier to check the eligibility of the role before asking an applicant to apply, as they are the person responsible for the check submission. For many roles, the simplest way of checking eligibility is to refer to the table and notes at the back of the eBulk Guide for Diocese of Exeter DBS Evidence Checkers, provided by CCPAS when you registered as a verifier. This table provides guidance on eligibility for the vast majority of roles you will encounter in a church, parish or mission community. If the specific role is not listed, or a role that would closely match it in terms of activity and responsibility, CCPAS have produced an online interactive guide that allows you to step through the different features of the role to determine if it is eligible or not. The web address for this guide should be issued to you on registering, but can be obtained by emailing dbs at exeter.anglican.org. If after referencing all of these information sources, you are still unsure about a role's eligibility, then you can contact CCPAS, your local Archdeacon's PA, or the Diocesan DBS Coordinator for further guidance or clarification. When looking at eligibility, you will find that there are two types of check that can be carried out through eBulk. These are enhanced and enhanced with check of the barred lists, sometimes referred to as enhanced plus. The enhanced check searches through the information and records held by local or national police forces. Enhanced plus also carries out a check of the barred lists, which are a set of lists where those named are prohibited from working in different capacities with certain people in specified places, roles, activities or professions. A check of the barred lists is only possible if the applicant will be working in what is termed regulated activity. Regulated activity, which you will sometimes find referred to as RA, applies to roles meeting a specific set of criteria that indicate that the individual will be engaging in activity that poses a potentially higher risk to the individuals concerned. The table at the back of the eBulk Guide for Diocese of Exeter DBS Evidence Checkers indicates whether someone acting in a specific role is, or could be, in regulated activity. This might not cover the role you are considering, so in Appendix 6 of the same guide you will find a flowchart that takes you through the process of determining whether they are in regulated activity or not. The regulated activity criteria are quite complex, so there are additional notes accompanying the flowchart that will assist in recognising specific activities that would count as regulated activity. With some activities, they may be considered as regulated activity based upon the regularity with which they are performed. Many, particularly with children, will count as RA if performed only once but others may need to be performed on a rotor basis or frequently or intensively. Frequently, when considering RA, means once a week or more. Intensively means overnight or for four or more days in a 30-day period. Only if these criteria are satisfied can the role be considered to involve regulated activity and only then can a check be made of the barred lists. If you are unclear on regulated activity being present in a role, the online interactive eligibility guide from CCPAS will also help to identify whether a role constitutes regulated activity or not. Once the role has been determined to be eligible for a DBS check, you will need to ask the applicant to complete a confidential declaration form, or self-declaration form as you may see it described in some guidance.
This form can be found in the Church of England's Practice Guidance Safer Recruitment document that you can download from the Diocese of Exeter website or in the appendices of the eBulk Guide for Diocese of Exeter DBS Evidence Checkers. It is essential that this form be completed. In the first instance, it is your evidence of the applicant consenting to you performing the DBS check. It is illegal to perform a check without the individual's consent. In the second instance, it is an invaluable tool in assessing the safety of appointing an applicant. The applicant has the opportunity to be open and honest about any actions, behaviours or offences from the past that could have a bearing on their ability to safely perform the role. In many instances, information provided on this form in combination with any subsequent DBS disclosure can be risk assessed and a plan be made in conjunction with the diocesan safeguarding advisor to manage the safe appointment of the applicant. If information appears on the DBS disclosure, however, and the applicant had not been forthcoming about this on their confidential declaration, then it raises concerns over their honesty and the level of risk they may pose if they are actively trying to conceal their history. Confidential declaration forms should be held by the safeguarding rep for the parish or body appointing them. The simplest way to start the DBS check with the applicant is to email them. You could provide a letter with the same information if they do not have email, but it is far easier and cheaper in terms of printing to email them the information they will require to apply online. In the email, you need to prompt them to complete the confidential declaration form if they haven't already, attaching a blank copy of the form for them to print and sign. You need to direct them to the website to make their application online and to assist them with this, you should attach the eBulk Guide for Applicants. The key information they will need to complete their application is the organisation reference, the organisation password, and the role title to use. Finally, you should let them know what ID documents they will need to provide, a list of which can be found in the Applicants Guide, and how they can arrange to show you their ID evidence for verification. The contact details for support with their application from CCPAS are in the applicant's guide, but it can be helpful to provide those in your email too. It is important that the organisation reference they enter for their application is the correct code, as if they enter the wrong code you will not be able to see their application online or verify their ID. All Diocese of Exeter codes start 9461A followed by three further digits that identify your specific church, parish, team, benefice or mission community. This is the organisation code that CCPAS sent you when they acknowledged your registration as a verifier. The organisation password for all Diocese of Exeter codes is Exeter9461, all uppercase with no space. Do not confuse the organisation password with your own personal password for logging into the website. The role title they will enter on their application is a generic role title that reflects the role they will be performing that makes them eligible for a DBS check. It may well not be the title they are appointed as or that they will be known by locally. Suitable role titles can be found from the table at the back of the eBulk Guide for Evidence Checkers. Armed with this information, the applicant can enter their personal details online and submit their application for a DBS check. Applicants may come back to you saying they can't get onto the CCPAS website, so remember to advise them that it is easiest to click on the link in the guide as they may be mistyping the address in the browser address bar. If the address is correct and they still cannot access the website, refer them to the CCPAS support line. Once the applicant has submitted their application online, you will need to meet with them to see their evidence documents. You need to meet them in person so you are sure that the documents relate to the individual presenting them. 
it is easiest to meet somewhere that has internet access so you can enter the ID document details directly into the system. If you write down the ID details on paper and then try to enter them when you get home, you may find you have missed out an ID number or dates that the system asks for when you try to verify the ID online. There is a restricted list of ID documents that the Disclosure and Barring Service will accept as proof of identity, and you can only accept originals, no photocopies or scans. The list of acceptable documents is available in the eBulk guides for both evidence checkers and for applicants along with a flowchart illustrating the acceptable combinations of these documents. The documents in the list are grouped as Group 1, Group 2A or Group 2B, and the flowchart will make reference to these groupings. Advise the applicants to pay close attention to the currency and validity of the documents they are offering as ID. It is very frustrating for both parties to have a wasted journey and delayed check because of an out-of-date passport, expired licence, or a document older than the prescribed 3 or 12 months as indicated by asterisks on the list. When arranging to meet to check an applicant's documents, it is worth making sure beforehand that they can provide all three documents required to satisfy the verification route labelled Route 1 in the flowchart. It becomes increasingly complex to verify their ID if they cannot provide the documents to satisfy Route 1. Route 1 simply requires a minimum of one document from Group 1, plus any two documents from Groups 1, 2A or 2B to complete the evidence check. If Route 1 cannot be satisfied, you attempt Route 2. Route 2 requires a minimum of one document from Group 2A, plus any two further documents from Groups 2A or 2B, with the addition of external ID verification through CCPAS. The external ID verification comes at a small cost which will need to be paid by the applicant or the body making the appointment. If Route 2 cannot be satisfied, you and your safeguarding rep will need to have a probing conversation with the applicant to understand why they are lacking the most common and trusted forms of ID. If you are at all unhappy with their reason or concerned with the veracity of their explanations, you should not appoint. If you have significant concerns over someone's claims around proof of identity, you should contact the diocesan safeguarding advisor as the police may need to be informed. If their explanation is credible, however, your last option is route free. Route 3 will involve obtaining a certified copy of a UK birth certificate and having fingerprints taken for the purpose of a search through police and government agency records. Both of these will incur a cost to the applicant. Hopefully you can see from these three routes there's a little extra effort to ensure that documents for Route 1 can be produced, saves a lot of effort and potentially cost so do stress the importance of finding the right documents to the applicant. Once you have arranged to meet with the applicant and check that they have the required ID documents, you are ready to verify their identity online. The first step is to log in. Your login details will have been sent to you when you registered with CCPAS. The eBulk Guide for Diocese of Exeter DBS Evidence Checkers takes you through the login process. This is slightly different the first time you use the system and may take a little longer than normal, so it is worth doing your initial login ahead of arranging to verify anyone's ID so that any login issues can be addressed without an applicant waiting around. Having logged in, you will have a list of applications ready for checking. You can only see those applicants that made their application using your organisation code. To open an application, click on the blue reference number. Within the application, you will need to access the Overview tab and the Application tab to see all the details entered by the applicant. 
Before you ask for their ID, you need to check that they have completed all of the application details correctly. Many web browsers have an autofill function for online form completion, whereby when the user starts typing in one field, the browser will attempt to fill the other fields in the form automatically based upon previously completed forms. While this is intended to be a helpful feature, it is actually a risky feature for official forms like DBS applications, as it can fill a field with an incorrect value and the user may not notice. This happens quite commonly with the name fields in DBS applications. A frequently seen issue is the applicant's first name also appearing as a middle name on the form, so pay close attention to the name fields on each application you are verifying. Check that the role title they have entered on their application is the generic role title that the DBS will understand and not their locally used title. When you are satisfied that the application details are correctly entered, you are ready to verify their ID. To start the evidence checking, you need to click on the blue Complete ID Check button that you will find at the bottom of the Overview tab. Having clicked the Complete ID Check button, you will be taken to the Identity Check screen for that applicant. At the top will be a summary of the personal details that need to be checked. Compare the full name, current address and date of birth that have been entered on the application with those on the identity documents supplied by the applicant. It is vital that this is done rigorously, especially over the spelling and completeness of the full name. If the supplied details and the ID documents do not match, you should ask some probing questions to determine whether this has simply been an error in data entry or if there has been an attempt to falsify or conceal their true identity. It is most likely the former and the details on the application can simply be corrected ready for you to proceed again, but you should always be watchful and report any concerns raised by the behaviour of an individual to the diocesan safeguarding advisor or the police. Once you are satisfied that the ID matches the application information, you are ready to record the evidence provided on the system. By default, the identity check screen starts off with the options required for Route 1 identity checking. If the applicant hasn't got sufficient evidence to go via Route 1, or subsequently Route 2, click on the Next Route button at the bottom of the form to move to the Next Route option. To record the evidence document details, simply click on the drop-down lists and pick the corresponding document type from the list. Some documents such as passports and driving licences, will cause a new pop-up window to appear when now selected. This new window will ask for the details of the document to be completed, i.e. the passport number, driver number, issue dates, expiry dates, etc. Other document types, such as bank statements or utility bills, will trigger a pop-up asking you to confirm whether the document is less than 3 or 12 months old, as is applicable for that document. Having completed all the document drop-down boxes, the form asks you to confirm that you have checked their current address and their date of birth against the supplied documents by selecting Yes from the drop-down boxes. There is also a field at the bottom labelled Cost Code Personnel Number but this is an optional field provided for large organisations to track checks against employees, so it's typically not relevant for checks in the Diocese of Exeter. Once you are satisfied that the person in front of you is who they say they are, and you have filled in all of their document details correctly, you need to click on the Save button. Not clicking on this button is a common mistake as is clicking on Next Route instead of Save. When you click on Save, you will be taken back to your list of applicants. 
having completed the ID check, the application you just verified will no longer be in your list of waiting checks. If you find that you have to use route 2 to complete a check, you will need to fill in an extra external verification form online through CCPAS to have the applicant's identity verified against national record systems. If you have to use route 3 to complete a check, you will need to arrange for fingerprints to be taken and checked. The applicant will also have to individually apply for a copy of their birth certificate to be issued. Should you need any advice on how to proceed with Route 2 or Route 3, you should contact CCPAS on 0845 120 4550. There are a couple of forms that need to be completed in addition to the online application through CCPAS. These can be completed in electronic format or in hard copy format as you prefer or as need arises. It is best to complete them at the same time as completing the online ID check to be sure there are no inconsistencies. Once the ID check has been completed, the application is no longer visible for you on the system so be sure to capture all the personal details of the applicant on these forms before you submit the ID check online. The first of these forms is the Parish Information Log. This form provides an audit trail for the parish, benefit or mission community for who has been checked and recruited and for tracking renewals. The parish information log sheets should be held by the safeguarding rep of the church, parish or organisation that made the appointment. So if you are not also the safeguarding rep, then you must send the completed form on to them for their records. The first field on the parish information log is the applicant's name. This should be their full name, including all middle names. The second field should be the name of the employer or the church, parish or organisation making the appointment. If for any reason the ID check had to be carried out under a different organisation code, for example if the applicant was related to the verifier for that parish, then make a note of the code used for the check in brackets in this field. In the third field, enter the generic role title exactly as was submitted on their DBS application. This will help with using the appropriate role title again at renewal. If you wish to tie up the check with their locally used title, please record their local role title in brackets. The fourth field is for whether they are working in activity that is eligible for a DBS check with the child, adult or both workforces, so can simply be completed as child, adult or both. Remember that just being present with children or adults doesn't mean you are engaging with that workforce in a DBS eligible sense. For example, there will be parents present at a toddler group, but the toddler group leader is not working with those adults in any capacity that is eligible for a DBS check, so the applicant would only be eligible for a child workforce check in that situation. For level of check in the fifth field, this can be completed simply as enhanced or enhanced plus check of the barred lists. Whether the applicant's role involves regulated activity that makes it eligible for a check of the barred lists or not should have been determined when you were initially deciding on the eligibility of the role for a DBS check. If you are unsure whether they are in regulated activity or not, refer to the flowchart and tables at the back of the eBulk guide for Diocese of Exeter DBS evidence checkers. The sixth field is where you indicate whether the role is a paid role or a voluntary role. The definition of a paid role is broader than just one with a salary or stipend however as it also includes roles where they are gaining a qualification or accreditation or training or experience that will lead to paid employment, so be careful on how you complete this field. The subsequent field is dependent on it being a paid role or not. 
If it is a voluntary role, then there is no DBS fee to pay, and the diocese will pay the processing fee. So you should enter not applicable. For paid roles, however, there will need to be payment made by the appointing organisation of the £44 DBS fee. This field allows you to track that payment has been sent. The diocese will not process a DBS cheque for a paid role until it has received the payment from the church, parish or organisation requesting the cheque. The eighth field is where you, the verifier, enter your name. This is in case of any queries raised by CCPAS or the DBS, so the safeguarding rep can track back to see who verified the evidence documents. In the field below, you should record the types of documents that were seen as evidence. This is just an audit trail measure to ensure that adequate and sufficient evidence were seen to check their identity and current address. Be sure not to enter any reference numbers or similar in these fields though, as these cannot be recorded on these forms for data protection reasons. Just the type, i.e. British passport, UK photo driving licence, is necessary. The last three fields will not be completed by the verifier at this point. These fields will be completed by the safeguarding rep, so having completed the parish information log sheet up to this point, you should email, post or securely pass this form onto the safeguarding rep. The disclosure reference number and date of issue of disclosure fields will be completed by the safeguarding rep when they see the original DBS certificate when it has been received by the applicant. The applicant is now the only person to receive a copy of the certificate, so they must show the original to the safeguarding rep in order that any blemishes are disclosed, and so that the issue dates can be recorded and tracked for renewal purposes. The final field to be completed on the parish information log sheet is the date applicant began role field. As was stressed earlier, the DBS check is only one element of the safer recruitment process, so receipt of the DBS certificate alone is not sufficient to say that the applicant can start. Only once the employing organisation is satisfied that all safer recruitment steps have been completed and now satisfied that the applicant is safe to undertake this role, should they be allowed to start. That start date should be recorded in this last field. The second form that must be completed by the verifier is the eBulk DBS Disclosure Cover Sheet, often just referred to as the cover sheet for simplicity. This cover sheet is required to provide the diocesan DBS team with all the information they require to complete their elements of the DBS approval process. If the cover sheet is not completed with the required information and sent on to the relevant person, then the DBS check cannot proceed any further, so it is vital that this part of the process is not overlooked. The first five fields should be straightforward to complete. The full name, address and date of birth should be completed exactly as you have seen them on the applicant's ID documents. The parish name and code should be that of the verifier that has performed the identity check. This is so that any queries from CCPAS or the DBS can be tracked back. The role title should be the generic role title that would be understood by the DBS, not any locally used title. The workforce field should be completed according to which workforce the applicant will be engaging with in DBS eligible activity, as explained earlier with the parish information log. Where the applicant will be working in regulated activity with a workforce, this should be indicated in the next two fields. If you are unsure about the regulated activity eligibility, refer to the flowchart and tables at the back of the eBulk guide for Diocese of Exeter DBS evidence checkers. The notes on eligibility and regulated activity for this applicant field is very important. The diocesan DBS team and the screening teams at CCPAS and the Disclosure and Barring Service will not know the role description and expected activities and responsibilities of your individual applicant. 
These can often be very different for two people, even when they share a common job title. It is therefore vital that you provide notes in this field that clarify what activities the applicant will be engaged with and with who, where and when, that makes them eligible for a DBS check with which workforce and if applicable for a check of the barred lists. Clarification should also be provided as to their volunteer or paid status. Failure to provide adequate notes on eligibility will delay your check and result in multiple emails or phone calls to ascertain the eligibility of the role before it can be approved for submission. If an ineligible check is submitted to CCPAS, we only have 10 days to provide proof of eligibility before the check is withdrawn and a new check will have to be started again from scratch, so it is much better if you have noted all the information from the start. If you have any queries over eligibility, please check the tables at the back of the eBulk guide for diocese vegs to DBS evidence checkers, or contact your local Archdeacon's PA or the diocesan DBS coordinator. A minority of roles may involve working from home, which should be indicated in the Working from Home with Children field. This field is only applicable when the work carried out at home involves activity that is eligible for a DBS check. If a youth worker, for example, hosts Bible study groups at their home, this would be eligible activity and this field should be marked yes. If the youth worker only completes their preparation at their home, then you would say no in this field, as while the role is eligible, the activity carried out at home is not DBS eligible. Applicants should be made aware that if they do work from home, then checks will be made against all adults residing at that address as part of the DBS check process. The Volunteer Position field asks you to confirm if this is a volunteer check or not. Remember that there are a number of instances when a role may be considered not to be voluntary that do not require the applicant to be in receipt of a salary, stipend or similar payment arrangements. The online system flags these conditions up when the diocesan DBS team are processing your checks so it is important that you have been clear and honest about these. Paid role checks incur a fee charged by the Disclosure and Barring Service that needs to be paid for by the organisation appointing the individual. Next, you need to enter the date that you verified the applicant's ID. After this, you need to enter your name and email address. This is so that any queries from CCPAS or the DBS can be tracked back to the original evidence checker for clarification. It is also helpful for ensuring that we have your up-to-date email address. The last three fields are our safer recruitment tracking steps. Before the diocesan DBS team approve your check, they want assurance from the body appointing the applicant that the full safer recruitment process is being followed. We want to know that a parish information log sheet has been produced for the safeguarding rep so they can track the application through to the applicant providing the issued disclosure certificate for inspection. We need to know that the applicant has provided a confidential declaration form and so has agreed to the DBS check and had the opportunity to disclose any information prior to the DBS check disclosure. Lastly, we need to know that references have been taken up. If this is a renewal check, then this is not applicable. Once you have completed the disclosure cover sheet, you need to send it to the appropriate person in the diocesan DBS team to process and approve the check. For the vast majority of applications, this is through one of the Archdeacon's PAs. Verifiers who are to send their sheets to the diocesan DBS coordinator such as the cathedral verifiers, will have received separate instructions. For most verifiers, therefore, on the cover sheet you will find the email address and postal address of each Archdeacon's PA. The sheet gives clear instructions as to which PA is looking after which Archdeaconry's checks. If it is a check for a volunteer role, 
then the cover sheet can be simply emailed through to the relevant PA. If it is a cheque for a paid role, however, you need to send a hard copy in the post along with the cheque for payment of any fees due. The Diocese of Exeter cover all the processing costs incurred for all of the DBS applications in the Diocese. This runs to several thousands of pounds every year. When an application is made for a non-volunteer cheque, the Disclosure and Barring Service levies a £44 fee for the cheque to be carried out, which the diocese cannot cover. The employing body, therefore, needs to provide payment of this fee. Cheques for payment of this fee should be made out to EDBF Limited for the sum of £44 and sent to the relevant Archdeacon's PA along with the cover sheet. Non-volunteer cheques will not be processed by the diocese until payment has been received. We regret any delay that this may cause, but it is a rule we must follow due to non-payment of large sums by parishes in the past. Upon receipt of the cover sheet and payment where applicable from the verifier, the relevant Archdeacon's PA will process what is called Section Y of the DBS application. The name Section Y harks back to when this was a distinct section on the old paper forms. Using the information provided on the cover sheet, the Archdeacon's PA will check the accuracy of the application and complete a number of fields confirming the workforces, eligibility and level of the cheque. This includes a compulsory notes field which is why the notes section on the cover sheet is so important. They will then confirm the status of the cheque as voluntary or paid. Once they are satisfied that this is a complete, valid and eligible cheque, they will approve the cheque. This approval submits the application to CCPAS for counter-signatory authorisation. When their screening team are also satisfied with the accuracy and eligibility of the cheque, they will countersign and submit the cheque electronically to the Disclosure and Barring Service. The first stage of the DBS cheque process upon receipt of a cheque is validation of the information provided by their own screening team. They will check for accuracy and will make their own decision over eligibility of the cheque. At stage 2, there will be a search of the Police National Computer for any matching or closely matching records. If the role involves regulated activity, then stage 3 is a search of the barred lists. Otherwise, this stage is omitted. Stage 4 is a comprehensive search of police records at the local constabulary level. It should be noted that records of multiple police service areas may be searched if records are held that are a close match to the details of the applicant. It is not dependent on where the applicant lives or has previously lived. Only once all these searches have been completed would a disclosure certificate be produced. The DBS now only print one copy of the disclosure certificate and this is sent directly to the applicant. It is vital, therefore, that the applicant knows that they must show the original certificate to the safeguarding rep as soon as is practical after they receive the certificate. Upon seeing the disclosure certificate, the safeguarding rep will need to note the disclosure certificate number and issue date on the parish information log sheet for that applicant. A disclosure of information on a DBS certificate is referred to as a blemish, so if any of the check fields come back with anything other than none recorded or not requested, it is a blemished disclosure. If any information is disclosed on the certificate, then the original certificate must be sent to the diocesan safeguarding advisor. It is not within the authority of anybody else in the diocese to make a call on whether the information disclosed is irrelevant, not applicable, or in any other way an obstruction to the appointment of the person concerned. That decision must be taken through a rigorous risk assessment process conducted by the diocesan safeguarding advisor, so they must receive the original certificate without delay. The person concerned must not be appointed 
nor can they be allowed to work with children or adults at risk until clearance has been given by the diocesan safeguarding advisor. Hopefully, this training video has given you as full an overview of the DBS verifier role and process as is possible. If you still have questions about the role or any part of the process, please do not hesitate to contact your local Archdeacon's PA, the Diocesan DBS Coordinator or CCPAS. If you have questions arising from a blemished disclosure or you simply have a question about the broader safer recruitment process, please contact the Diocesan Safeguarding Team. Thank you for taking the time to engage with this training video and thank you again for volunteering your time as a DBS verifier in the Diocese of Exeter. You are a vital part of the safeguarding commitment of this diocese.